So in today's video we're taking a look at a product that's proved to be quite popular for the M4 Mac Mini. A lot of people are at least asking questions about it, asking if it's any good, is it worth the money? And we're going to take a look at that today. This is the Satoshi Hub or Stand and Hub for the M4 Mac Mini which is brand new, just come out and it's got an NVMe enclosure underneath. So in this video we're going to take a look at it. Is it any good? Does it affect the Wi-Fi speeds? Because we love to ask that question. And is it worth the money you pay for it? As well as what features does it include? But if it's your first time on the channel, my name's Almir, AKA Mr. H Tech. On this channel, we make tech simple. If I earn your subscription anywhere in this video, remember just down below, there is a subscribe button. Do click it and join the community. We're so close to hitting that 20,000 subscribers. If you end up liking the video, there's also a like button down there you can press. Share it with your friends and family who also might be interested in tech content that I make. And let's check out the Satoshi Stand and Hub for the M4 Mac Mini. So here we've got the hub and it looks a lot smaller than when you're actually holding the box. So down here we have the section for the NVMe SSD which seems to be just a pull down and it unlocks. And then we've got the thermal application pad on there which is quite cool because it goes on the bottom instead of the top which I haven't seen before, but it's got the cutout for all the different connections you might need for the different sized NVMEs. We've of course got the connection cable. So one thing is with this is the cable is built into the actual hub. You can't switch it around for a different one. And then we've got these rubber pads, which I suppose are meant to hold the M4 Mac Mini in its place. So plastic top, and then we've got the USB, I assume this is the slower speed one, USB 2.0, and then we've got the two 10, 10 gigabit per second ports. SD, at least we've got an SD card slot. I can't stand these hubs that don't at least have an SD card slot or a micro SD card. But so far, looks quite good. And it's got this cutout on the back for you people that do love to turn on and off your MacBook, or not your MacBook, but your Mac mini using the power button, you won't have to fiddle about too much. You've got a cutout there, so you should be able to reach under and turn it off and on very easily. And then we've got some Stashy branding on the place. Now, if you watch my previous video, you can see that I made my Ultima Mac Mini with the storage at the top and the hub at the bottom. I'm gonna to have to take that apart now so I can put the M4 Mac Mini on this. So give me one second. Right, so I've taken the M4 Mac Mini outside of that enclosure. And something I've noticed is these little rubber grommets or stops, they do kind of hold the M4 Mac Mini in there quite well. I mean, bear in mind, it's not gonna be like a very hard to move it. So if you do push the M4 Mac Mini, it will come off, but giving it a bit of elevation and a little bit of stability, I think it's perfectly fine because you're not really gonna be moving it or touching it that much once it's placed into its place. Now, let's put the NVMe in there. First thing we've got to do is put the heat sinking. Now, something I'm not a fan of is the speed they've selected for this NVMe with that 10 gigabit connection because no matter how fast of an NVMe you're going to put in there, you're going to be capped at around 900 megabits and 1000 megabits per second speeds, regardless of what NVMe you put in there. Now, for example, I've selected the Orico O7000. Now, this is capable of so much more than what this hub will allow it to do. You can get like four or 5000 megabits per second speeds on this NVMe. It's super fast, super reliable and it's not that expensive. But plugging it in here, it's gonna severely limit capabilities of it, but it is what it is. That's what we've got. And now I've got the Orico 0700 NVMe I'm gonna put in there. So once we stick it in, you're gonna use the screw and the screwdriver that came in the box, comes in a little bag. So it's nice that that's supplied. And now once we screw that in, we're going to be testing the speeds of the NVMe. There we go, all closed up, ready for the Mac Mini to go on top. Now, something I'm not a fan of is that this is going to be using one of the Thunderbolt 5 ports on my M4 Pro Mac Mini. And of course, if you have the base model M4 Mac Mini, you're going to be using a Thunderbolt 4 port. I wouldn't mind that much if the NVMe speeds I was getting here was Thunderbolt 4 at least with that 40 gigabyte connection, but this is only 10. So you're going to be getting speeds, like I said, around 900 to 1000. So it is quite a big trade off for me. I really wish they would have upgraded 
that to the 40 gigabit one. You do have another two ports, but that's quite an important port to lose out on, considering they've also put three USB-A's on the front, which I don't know why I would much prefer USB-C ports, at least one USB-C port instead of the slow USB-A that they've put in there. I do actually like the design. I didn't think I would like it that much, but I do like that cutout for the power button, even though I wouldn't use it that much. And I do like how it looks when the actual Mac Mini is on top of it. Something I don't like though is the selection of ports they've chose, what they're missing out on with the slower speeds on the NVMe, and not having a micro SD card slot as well. Now for something like I said that's come out on the market so much later than when the M4 Mac Mini was released, I think they had plenty of time to judge what the audience wanted and make something that fits their needs perfectly. Let me know if you think this also. If this came out the exact same time as the M4 Mac Mini came out, I would say, okay, fair enough, they didn't have time to see what the actual public was going to say they needed, so they made what they assumed people wanted, but that's not the case. First thing we're going to do is test out the disk speed of that NVMe. Now this is an Orico 07000, so this is way more capable of, say, 4000 megabytes per second read and write speeds, but let's see what the capability is once it's in the Satoshi Hub. So we've got it here, two terabyte drive, open it up, set it to five gigabytes and start the test. And just like I thought, 970 on the write, probably around the same on the read because it's severely capping the capabilities of the NVMe. And this is something I really don't like seeing in these NVMe hubs on the Informac Mini. It is not hard to put a Thunderbolt 4 speed one in there and just let everyone benefit. I think everyone would prefer to pay $20, $30 more and get that much, much faster speed as opposed to something like this. Now, some people won't mind it, but for someone like me who uses that external drive as an extension for my internal storage on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, I really would benefit from that faster speed than having it this speed. Let me know in the comments box below, what do you think? Is this perfectly capable for the majority of people or would the majority of people like the faster connection of Thunderbolt 4? Especially since you're giving up at least a Thunderbolt 4 port or a Thunderbolt 5 port just to connect the hub to the M4 Mac Mini. So now we're gonna run Wi-Fi test with this Teshi hub. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run two speed tests with the M4 Pro Mac Mini on this Teshi hub and then we'll run two more with it off this Teshi hub and disconnected from the hub just to see if there's any difference in the speed. So this one is speed test number one with the M4 Pro Mac Mini on the hub. So for download, we're looking at around 335 on the download and upload 65. Now the upload seems to be around normal. It does fluctuate between 65, 75. Download seems to be quite a lot lower than I mean, not extreme, but definitely some interference calls. But let's test it one more time. See what we get for the second result. So this time we've got 316.4 megabytes on the download, megabits. And on the upload, we're looking at 69, 69 on the upload. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to disconnect the M4 Pro Mac Mini from this Teshi Hub and move this Teshi hub away. And then we're gonna run the two times tests again. Now, you can see now that this Teshi hub is over here. It's not underneath the M4 Pro Mac Mini. So whatever happens, happens. It's not like I'm editing the results or anything like that. So we'll give it 10 seconds just to adjust itself. And then we're gonna run the speed test again twice. See if there's any speed differences with these Teshi hubs. So let's run the speed test now. So we're at 430 on the download and upload 67, 68, 69. So test number one, we're already around 100 megabits on the download improvement and then upload, like I said, it fluctuates around there anyway. So let's run it one more time. Test again, just to be sure. And the second time, 393 on the download and on the upload. I think upload is going to remain the same somewhere around there. 
Something I will say is for the price you're paying for this Teshi hub, it's around, what is it, around $100? Maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. And I don't think you're getting the best value for money because I've seen RayQ, they've got hubs similar to this, but it's 40 gigabyte connection ones for the NVMe. So you're getting much faster NVMe speeds on there, as well as the two USB-A ports are on the back. You get a audio port in the back as well. And then on the front, you get a micro SD card slot, an SD card slot, and I think it's a CF Express slot for whoever uses that. And I think it was only like $30, $40 more, but you're getting so much more in return. So definitely think about that. All the products will be linked down below. So let me know what you think is better, the Sateshi or possibly the RayQ I'm going to show on the screen. And I might even get the RayQ in for review as well, so we can compare it to the Sateshi side by side. But yeah, that Wi-Fi seems to be have a 20% disturbance, and I've noticed that, that usually on these type of hubs, short cables are not the way to go. So yeah, let me know. Remember, if I earned your subscription, hit the subscribe button down below, like the video, share it with your friends and family who also might like this kind of content. And thank you for watching, thank you for support. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. All links to all products will be down below, and I will catch you on the next one.